Today is the start of a reading experiment where I read booktubers' worst books of 2021. The worst books of 2021. The worst books to be consumed by the eyeballs of booktubers. The books these booktubers wanted to slam into a puddle and jump all over. <coughs> Sorry, I had something in my throat. Jeez. Why is it sometimes that I want to read a book because I know that somebody hates it with a fiery passion? What makes a book appealing when I know somebody hates it? I feel like there's a science behind that. Somebody do a science report. I need the deets. I need the receipts. You'd think I'd see somebody talking about a book that they hated and just be like, nah, I ain't never gonna read that. No. But instead I'm pulling an Ariana Grande and saying, yeah, 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 yeah. It almost sounds like something a villain would do for fun. Oh, you hated that book? I'm gonna read it forwards and backwards and then send you 10 copies just for kicks and giggles. I've picked out three of my favorite booktubers on this platform, which there are so many booktubers that I love, so to pick out three was hard. The Queen of Comedy with Cindy, my best friend Elias, and the Queen of Romance, Mina Reitz. These are three booktubers that I would say have complete opposite tastes as me. Cindy is a lot more critical than I could ever be. She's the critic I aspire to be though. You know, the PG version anyway. Elias and I, despite being best friends, have completely different reading palettes. And one of our favorite things to do is to argue over things we disagree on. Some might say we have a little bit too much fun bullying each other. He has more fun doing it than I do. That's a fact. Then we've got Mina. I love her content, but she is literally in a completely different book aisle than me. Like literally. She's in the romance aisle and I am nowhere to be found. I'm probably in the bathroom taking a dump. She primarily reads romance and we all know how I feel about that now, don't we? Yes, we do. It's unfortunately become a part of my personality trait to hate romance books. Part of the reason why I picked these booktubers though is because I want to see if I end up loving these books that they hate because we have such opposite tastes. You know? You feel me? You get where I'm getting at? You done get it? I'm gonna go in order here, Cindy Elias Mina. Now the book that I chose for Cindy actually didn't make her worst books of 2021 list, so technically I'm cheating, but that's okay. I'm already cheating, but I made the game, so bite me. Don't bite me. I don't even want to be bit by a sexy vampire. The book I chose is The Midnight Library. I was actually surprised that this specific book didn't make her worst books of 2021 list because I specifically remember her ripping in a new one in a video review that she did. It was a full-on roast fest and I ate up all she served, like nom nom, chop chop, choo choo. <laughs> down the throat, you know? For each of these booktubers and each of these selections, I wanted to read books that I thought that I would actually be interested in, so I'm picking The Midnight Library for her. In Cindy's video, she gave it a 2 out of 5 stars, and the title of her video with the book in it is This Corny Inspiring Book About Depression Will Be My 13th Reason. Sounds promising, right? I believe this book is about a library of lives that exists between life and death, and it gives a person who is in between life and death the chance to try out different lives. And each life that they try out is the same life had they made different choices. And honestly, this this does sound like it's right up my alley, like I feel like this is a book that I will end up enjoying, and I do hope that I leave it ending up enjoying it. We shall see though. I'll be back once I've knocked this one out. I finished the Midnight Library. I have thoughts. <laughs> you guys! This book just wasn't it. I'm sorry if it did it for you, but it didn't do it for me. I'm leaving this book feeling pretty neutral, to be honest. I enjoyed the writing style, but that's because it's like dipped in metaphors and lyrical delight. And sure, there were times when the author could have reeled it in with the fluffy, fluffy writing, but I personally didn't mind its poetic goodness. The one thing with the writing where I felt kind of meh was where it felt like the author was trying to be quote worthy. I don't know if that makes sense. Like it almost felt like a part of the aim for this book was to be a book that could be quotable. Quotes that people want tattoos of all over their bodies or quotes to put on art prints or mugs. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. If that's the aim, then get it, get it, get it. But to me, it was just like, okay, we should cut a few of these inspirational quotes to make it feel less like you're trying to shove it down our throats. Like too many inspirational quotes, man. This is not a gallery of inspirational quotes. That is not a gallery that I would even like to go to unless they were pretty. But I could just like flip the page and find an inspirational quote. Fish get depression. Okay, that's not inspirational. Oop, my stomach is starting to hurt and I blame you. I'm obviously no stranger to books that incorporate time loops. And this one reached a point with me where things just felt like they were getting a bit redundant. And I think I think having a time loop in a book is a difficult and challenging thing to write because you've really got to make sure that these time loops aren't going to end up boring to the reader and that's not easy I get it but if you've got a book with time loops in it you've got to prepare for that I feel like if I was forced to live my life over and over again just with me making different decisions and having different outcomes I don't think that I would want that I think that I would want to just like live a different life like I want to wake up one day being a pop star I want to wake up one day being a barista why did I just go from pop star to barista I don't know couldn't tell you I do like coffee though so maybe Maybe that's why. Then we get to the part where I'm very much so like, yikes. A big element running through this book is mental health. And I always have a hard time critiquing books that have it as an element because there is a chance that somebody read this book and it really helped them on their mental health journey. But in my opinion, it just wasn't really dealt with in that great of a way. I think in fact, it just wasn't really dealt with at all. The author needed to do a lot more work to kind of flesh it out instead of getting to a point where suddenly the characters just all fine and dandy. Wabam, mixed. No issues moving forward, all Gucci. If I could just blinkity blink my eyes 
and be better. I'd be blinkity blinking, but that's just not the case. And sure, you could argue that this is fiction and it doesn't have to be realistic and this and that and this and that. But books like this can also be really harmful for people who are dealing with similar situations because there's no such thing as a mental health blink cure. I can assure you that. I'm gonna watch Cindy's video again and pull some of her thoughts and compare my thoughts with hers. The first point is that it gives her corny Hallmark vibes, which I never really got the Hallmark vibes. Like I never was like cringing reading it per se. Like was I a bit overwhelmed at times by all the inspirational quotes being thrown at us? Yes, but I never was like, this feels very cheesy. Her next point is that the librarian is used as a mouthpiece for the author, which I 110% agree. That was something that was like actually just like so noticeable though. Like you could just tell that the author was being used as like a way for him to kind of push his messages, I guess. Like he should have just written himself in the story, honestly. Like the librarian's name should have been Matt. That's how clear it was that those messages were coming from him. And then her last point in her review was that someone dealing with depression is that the last thing that they would want to do is have to go through a million lives again. Which yeah, I feel like I agree with that. Like the last thing a depressed person wants to deal with is life in general. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to have our main character dealing with depression and having like the solution being going through all these time loops. I'm actually really surprised that Cindy and I have such similar views because I really thought that we were going to end up on different sides of the book map. But Bessie's in the driver's seat and I'm in the passenger seat. We in the same car on the same path. Next up I'm going to be reading one of Elias's worst books and that book is The Maidens. This book was actually on his worst books of 2021 list. Boy hated this book. I remember when he first read it and he ranted to me about it while we played a video game which is not a new scenario for us. So he's the one that's usually ranting. I'm the little angel that never has any Anything negative to say ever. Me saying anything bad ever? As if. I know Elias is watching this right now and screaming. I believe this book is in the dark academia lane, but I could be wrong about that. In this book, we have Edward, who is apparently a murderer, and our main character is very sure of that. But he's a handsome and cunning Greek tragedy professor at Cambridge, and everyone adores him. Specifically, this group of female students known as the Maidens. The way that specifically is already giving me the icks. Ickity ickity. A group of female students spawning over a handsome professor. Disgusting. I hate it already. Ready. A murder leads to our main character doing everything she can to prove Edward as guilty. Time to read it. Oh, 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 oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Because of the fact that Elias and I tend to feel so vastly different about the media that we consume, Boy literally ripped to shreds a book that I loved the other day. A book that was on my 2021 favorites list. I was for sure going into this one being like, I'm gonna love it. It's gonna be my favorite book of 2022. But guys, this book was a snooze fest. Like genuinely, I would have rather spent my time taking a nap than reading this book. <laughs> Call me harsh, but I'm just calling it what it was. A snooze fest. I have quite a few gripes for this book, but I guess we'll start with the positives. Get the positives out of the way so we can gripe it up. Before I rip the band-aid off and reveal the damage, I loved the setting and atmosphere in terms of it being set at a university. And there were some nice eerie vibes where the author was able to give me the creeps. The creepy weepies. The creep de creeps. I also enjoyed the fact that the book had short chapters. Because I'm a fan of feeling like a fast reader. I might not be the fastest reader, but you know what makes you feel like a fast reader? Short chapters. Is that really a positive critique? for this book. It is when you're grasping to find good things to say about it. I guess I could say the pacing was a plus. We love that fast pacing. Oh yes we do. The faster, the better. Now it's time for the gripes, so buckle up. Our characters were so dry, so underdeveloped, so one-dimensional. I was just waiting for one character to jump out at me and add some shape to the story. But just like my butt, these characters were flat. Don't even get me started with our main character, even though I'm about to start, because I'm about to rant. The way Miss Girly Mariana, which that's her name by the way, our main character, Mariana, the way she just full on chucks herself into this investigation is low-key annoying. Like, Girlie was just like, back off investigators. I got this. Girlie be messy. Drop the main and main character and add messy and that's what we've got. Messy character. I don't know if the intent was to push her into unlikable character, which let me just say, I love unlikable characters. Like, typically I root for them. I'm like, yes, you're unlikable. I boarded the train and down the tracks into Loveville we go. But it's a no for me, love. She had me rage reading because of how much I disliked her. Like, she was just kind of annoying the whole book and then there were things that she did involving her niece that I just was kind of flabbergasted by and just felt like really uneasy about, I guess is the best way to put it. Like it just feels like Girlie does not care about a certain situation that I feel like she should care for. Again, I don't know if that was a plan to just like make her more unlikable. And if that's the case, you succeeded. But I feel like even unlikable characters tend to have little things about them that you still kind of like. Like they might be very aggravating at times and hard to read. They still have little bits about them that are redeemable. Also the reveal in this book just was not it for me. It wasn't it. If you've read, you know. The girls that 
that get it, get it. The girls that don't, don't. And overall, I am just underwhelmed. Make this one thing that Elias and I agree on. But don't you worry, there are plenty of things we disagree on. I'm gonna watch this video again and pull some of his points. Okay, so his first point is that he thought it was effing ridiculous. And to that I say amen. We are one and the same there. His next point is that it has the dumbest plot twist he's read in any book. What a mood! A whole mood! I agree with you, bestie! And then his final point is that he hated the main character, which yes, yep, yep, uh-huh, I agree, yes. Call me a hater, but I will gladly take that title. I'm actually really sad that I didn't like this book. I will say that going in, I was a little sus just by reading the description alone. Like, the fact that there is this group of girls called the Maidens that are fawning over a professor, like, that was a red flag. That should have been very telling as to where I was going to end up with this book, because that alone, not the most, you know, intriguing element to me. That doesn't sound like it's gonna be a book that I love. We are now moving on to the final book for this video, and that is one that Miss Mina Reads hated. And honestly, in this video, this is the one that I feel like I am the most nervous about, because it's a romance book. So right out of the bag, I'm going in like, there's just no way this is going to be something that I'm into. And I kind of hate that I'm going in feeling this way, but I just kind of can't help it. I just resent books that have any kind of romance element in them. And maybe that's a stigma that I need to work my way through. But it's just currently where I'm sitting. The book I chose that she hated was actually not in her worst books of 2021 video. Cindy, Nina, what are you guys doing? You guys said you hated these books, and then they're not in your worst books of 2021 video. What's going on? But this was in her Meteor Book Freakout tag, and she said it was her most disappointing book of 2021. It's the book that I'm the most interested in out of the books that she hated last year, though. So I'm gonna give it a go. That book is Twice Shy. In this book, we follow Maybelle, who inherits a home from her great aunt. And Maybell sees this as an opportunity to start fresh. But when she goes to see the house, she finds out that she is a co-inheritor and that she owns the house technically with somebody else now. And that somebody else is this guy named Wesley. And I'm sure they have some fights over the house and then they end up falling madly in love with each other. That's just, I imagine that's what happens. I don't know if that's what happens, but I'm gonna find out. Time for reading. Watch out! Wow. So... <laughs> Oh, guys, I think I'm having a bit of a crisis. I, I love, I, I love, I'm gonna vomit. I loved this. I loved every bit of it. Here's the deal though. I trust Mina. She's the queen of romance and she knows her stuff. I know nothing. Absolutely nothing. Romance book brain, empty. But maybe because this is one of the first adult romance books I've ever read. And I don't have much experience with this genre. And I don't have much to base it off of. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. I don't know. I'm very confused. I'm having a bit of a crisis. I'm scared that I even loved it. Like, help. I'm drowning. What is happening to me? I don't even know myself anymore. I will say though that I feel like one of the main reasons why I love this book so much is because I related so much to the character Wesley, our male character, and not the fact that he wants to build a zoo and that's like his main passion in life. Though you could say that my life is like a zoo. But I'm more so related to him in the fact that he doesn't have that much experience with romance. Everything was new to him when it came to the love lane. And because of that, he faced quite a few issues when the love bug bit him. There's also a social anxiety and panic attack element that I related to a lot. I was like, hello, are you writing about my own experience? Because I feel very seen right now and I'd like you to put the covers back on that so nobody can read me. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will say though that sometimes a book can be more enjoyable if it's relatable, so it might not necessarily be a good book, but because there were so many things in it that I related to, I couldn't help but grow a fondness for it. I think the thing that is so confusing to me though is that like I not only like loved it because I related to it, but like I loved the romance. Like that is so confusing to me and not to be cringe on Maine, but the romance was adorable. <laughs> Ew, I hate myself. I genuinely hate myself. Like ugh. I was like literally doing like a little giddy boy dance in the living room as I was reading this because I was just like loving the romance like what has happened to me? I don't like this. I don't like it. I don't want- I want to go back. Let's rewind to before I read this book where I hated romance books. Please. Can we back it up? Back it back, 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 back it up. Like normally I want to throw a book in the trash with the slightest hint of romance. I feel like I knew my taste. I feel like I knew what I liked. But this book has thrown me for a loop-de-loop. -loop. And I feel completely lost in life again as if I wasn't lost already. Okay, let's compare my thoughts to Mina's thoughts. Maybe it'll make me have a change of heart. Let me watch her video. Okay, I just watched her video and it's actually kind of funny because I feel like a lot of our differences just come down to different different taste with what we like in books. So she starts off by just saying it wasn't for her, and good on her for recognizing that, that it's just not her type of book. Her next point is that the main character was not her kind of protagonist, and that she just wasn't into the quirky vibe. I personally loved her quirky vibe, and I never saw it as like over the top, but I could see where someone would feel that way about Maybelle, the main character. Her last point was that the relationship was too slow burn for her, which I'm realizing that that might be the reason why the relationship worked for me and why I was like so invested in it, because it wasn't like automatic. They really took their time to like connecting and kind of getting to that role romance part.
heart. And I love slow burn, so it worked out for me. I love when two characters take time before they dive into the deep end. So this one just kind of all comes down to different preferences with Mina and I. Which, Mina, if you're watching this and you have any recommendations for me for books that are slow burn, let me know, bestie. Let me know, girly. Hit me up. Please. All right, guys, that is it for me reading Booktuber's Worst Books of 2021. Again, I did kind of cheat because some of these books were not on Booktuber's Worst Books of 2021, but they did rate them really low. They clearly did not love these books, so it's fine. I make the rules here. I'm the game maker. I say that as if anybody's gonna come for me. Nobody's gonna come for me. Nobody really cares. This is actually really fun for me. I did do this once back in 2019, but I feel like for some reason this time around was so much more fun. I think it's because I actually ended up enjoying a book which I'm still having a crisis over, but <laughs> this is really fun. Let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. But if not, let me know down below in the comments what one of your worst books of 2021 was and why it was your worst book of 2021. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you wanna see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye, y'all.